Hi there! Finally back! This is Andreas from Wixshow.com uh, I am going to live code page with uh, repeaters. Uh, I got a lot of questions about repeaters and how to code the repeaters without using data sets and also how to search and update uh, the repeaters. So what we will do in this uh, video, we will take the data collection that I have here called producers. There's a lot of gibberish uh, data here with uh, some title, content, image, I just imported an Excel uh, uh, file. So there's a lot of uh, stuff we won't use, but there's also, you know, there's an, enough data to, to try this. So what we will do first, of course, uh, we will go to the add here and we will add, uh, we will go to list and grids and we will just drag out an ordinary uh, repeater and attach it to the page. Uh, what I usually do is I go into and I just delete uh, the uh, first, uh, the second uh, and the third item. So I just get one here because I believe that the second and third is kind of, you know, it's uh, not working as it should be. I also go into name uh, the repeater as item repeater here in the properties panel. Uh, the properties panel is really important when you start coding that you name your elements on the page to something that you will remember later on. So the repeater is named item repeater. Okay. Uh, I am also going to uh, delete some stuff here because I think it's, uh, it's uh, too much uh, information here. Uh, we will uh, move this content uh, window here. We will delete the from, uh, the price. Uh, I think we will delete this. Uh, okay, then no, let's keep the button uh, for a while here. Uh, a lot of people uh, ask me how to do this. So I will name the image just as image. I will name the title just as title. I will name the content area here to content and I see that the content area I forgot. Uh, let's do like this. Let's uh, move it like this, the content area. Uh, or we can just do like this because the content will auto expand. Uh, and let's uh, rename this as uh, link button or something, something like that, link button. And let's change the text to click me. Then outside the repeater, uh, let's uh, copy this and uh, drag that uh, to outside the repeater and uh, put it down here and uh, I will name this uh, action and I will uh, just uh, uh, this is uh, where our actions will be will show so we will try to use this field uh, when something happens and uh, we will change this action test text just to make you see. So ordinary, what you would do now is that you would uh, uh, drag out the data set to the page, connect the repeater to the data set and all the elements, blah, blah, blah. Uh, what we will do now is that we will code these things. So we will code everything. And first of all, we are going to need the Wix data. So we just import Wix data. Uh, to the set here and uh, when we are going to uh, load the page and uh, let's make a function here export fu export function uh, get all items uh, like this and then we will uh, 
use the Wix data, we will query the collection producers like this. We will uh, get all the items. So we just use find and then then and then we have the results here and let's make sure that we uh, uh, well uh, usually I go like this if results uh, total count uh, is larger than zero uh, then I do something uh, if not uh, I uh, you know can handle that if there's no data uh, return from the query uh, it uh, could be important to handle it in some kinds uh, ways depending on your situation but if we get uh, results here uh, we would like to say uh, items and we will get the results dot items uh, this will hold all our items so what we want to do now is that we want to uh, populate the repeater with the result of the function get all items. So we will uh, return this uh, and we will also change this to return results items and return null if we don't get any results. So what will happen when I run the get all items function, it will go and run the query to the producer's data collection, find it and return all the items back to the calling function. If there are no results, it will return null. Okay, so let's make a function that will populate the repeater now. So, uh, let's make a new function here um, that we can use to populate the repeater uh, let's call it uh, set uh, items and that function needs to get uh, uh, items array and that will hold all the returned items from the get all items function so uh, first of all, let's grab the repeater here, uh, the item repeater, and it's the data uh, method or uh, property that we need. And first of all, I always clear it. So first of all, I clear it. So whenever I do some filtering or search functions and going to use the set items, function again, I can be sure that the repeater is clear. Uh, then we get the repeater again here and we use the data again. And here we are going to use the items array. So what will happen when we call the set items on the items array is that that array of items will be uh, inserted into the data property of the repeater. And this, uh, in, on the other hand, makes the uh, on ready or for each. I uh, uh, tend to use the for each, uh, the for each uh, function uh, of uh, this. So what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to get the uh, W's, uh, the dollar W selector. I am also going to uh, write in the item data, which will hold the uh, every repeated item and also the index. And then I will make a function inside here uh, that will uh, handle the repetition of every item in the repeater. So first of all, I usually uh, do like this index uh, looping is and then I just uh, add the index just to see uh, that the uh, loop is working and looping through the amount of index that I am supposing uh, that we need. Uh, then we are going to set the, the different uh, date on the page in the repeater. 
So the title uh, dot text will be item data dot title, which is from the data collection. And we also are going to use the image that would be the source. Um, and we are going to use image from the data collection. We are also going to use uh, the content and we are going to set the text to item data uh, content uh, that way. So now we have set the uh, image, the title and the content uh, of the repeater. Uh, and now here's the thing that we want to handle the click, uh, the click option, the click event uh, of the button, of the link button here. So what we do now is that inside this function, we just uh, grab the link button like this, and we are going to use the on click uh, event for that, and we are going to. Uh, write in event and then the dollar $W uh, selector uh, like this and we are going to sorry I forgot that one here and then we are going to make uh, another function inside this and we are going to close that correctly uh, so when someone clicks the button uh, let's update the action uh, text uh, action uh, text and let's say that that should be uh, you have clicked the and then take the item data title uh, item in oops item in our repeater so uh, what will happen when I click this this should change to the clicked uh, item title so whenever I do uh, whenever I want to you know set the repeater I just call set items with the item array uh, and now we are going to do a cool thing we are going to uh, make a empty array that call all items here uh, which is global and then we're going to do like this we are going to sync the on ready function and we're going to say that all items equals await get all items so what will happen now is that when the page is loaded the uh, the function get all items will return all the items from our data collection into the global variable all items and after that we can use the set items and we can throw in the all items to it and it should send the all items uh, into the repeater loop through it and makes uh, make it work so uh, we haven't tried anything yet so let's just hit save so we don't lose anything uh, and let's uh, uh, preview uh, this function and see if uh, anything <laughs> works uh, of the code so okay so what we can see here now in the debug console is that we are looping through 49 uh, records and uh, you can see them all here uh, with the the content, the images, uh, the headlines and stuff like that. So uh, making the action text on the bottom of the page uh, was not uh, our most brilliant idea. So let's make it uh, here on the page instead. And let's try it again by previewing the page. So. When I click the button here, you can see you have clicked and the uh, title in our repeater. So when, whenever I click here on any button, that will change the text accordingly to the items that we have. So this is a very simple way uh, to make sure that any click event or any event at all on the items inside the repeater is handling is handled correctly 
So please remember do a function to set all your items in your repeater like this because it will save you a ton of times when you're going to work on the uh, uh, the different uh, filters or something. So let's make a small filter here. Let's take uh, let's take an ordinary input box here. Uh, let's add it here. Uh, let's uh, search uh, here. Uh, it's a uh, text. We will name it to search uh, search input like that. And we will also add a new button uh, to this uh, here that will say uh, search items and we will name it uh, search button. Okay, so I have created a text input type here uh, with the ID of search input. I have created a button with the ID of search button. Now I go and say on click, enter, and I get the on click here. So what I need to do is I will uh, create like let search word and I will take the value of the search input text so I can use the search word variable in my uh, search function. Uh, and now we are going to make a search function and usually when you do this you maybe you use uh, like set filter on the data set or you do a new query on your page uh, from the data collection and then uh, you will repopulate the repeater uh, from that query doing these kind of queries to the data collection and back and forth uh, takes time so your page will be less responsive for the user so this is the reason we created a global variable called all items because what happens is that when this page loads all the items are stored in the all items variable so what we will try to do now is that we will try to filter out the items from the array using the search word from the global uh, variable all items without touching the data collection and then we will just uh, re, uh, repopulate the repeater uh, in our function here set items uh, with the new data so let's try and see uh, how this will work first of all we will uh, make a small variable let's say we call it uh, current items or current items uh, we will uh, create that empty this variable will hold the results okay so uh, let's say like uh, um, let's make sure we use to lowercase here just in case uh, something is going uh, wrong so uh, first of all we do a if statement and we are going to check if oh sorry if search word uh, if uh, if that is uh, empty or uh, if uh, the length of it is uh, if it's uh, less than one then we are going to uh, clear it uh, so we are going to clear the search uh, by setting the current items uh, to the all items and then we're going to slice that from the first uh, record in it to I don't know uh, 10,000 or how many records you have in your uh, in your uh, data collection 
and if not, if there's a search word and the length is greater than uh, than one or equals one, then we need to search. Okay, so let us return. Uh, let us first go by return, and then we take our. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Then we're going to turn the uh, current items uh, to. Uh, uh, we are going to take it all items and we are going to filter all items uh, first and then we are going to uh, insert the item which will be the variable for us here and then we are going to create a function inside this that will return uh, and then we will return the item uh, the title of the item uh, to lower case so we are knowing that we are comparing everything accordingly uh, to lower case and then we are going to use the includes uh, function and the search string here it's going to be the search word and uh, we are not going to use the position here at all uh, so what will happen now is that uh, hopefully I will say um, sorry we're going to return the current items so if there is a search word we are going to use the filter function in JavaScript on the all items array and we're going to return the items where the title to lowercase includes the search word so uh, after this uh, has done we are going to return the current items but what we want to do is that we want to set items to current items because that will call our function to repopulate the repeater so let's save this and uh, see if something works. I, I have no idea. I'm, uh, you know, I'm not the best live coder uh, out there. So let's uh, let's uh, search here for uh, uh, for this word. Oops, uh, which is like honey in Swedish, and see, and it returned uh, one item. So if we are going to search for some else. Uh, you can see uh, that word I am searching for is present in all the titles. Uh, so if I just search for a letter, it will uh, return all the items that have this letter inside. So as you can see here, the search is lightning fast. And of course, it's lightning fast because we don't reload any data from the data collections. We just reuse the data that we already have in memory on the page. So uh, if you want to have like a reset uh, button uh, here, uh, let's uh, name it reset and reset uh, button. And uh, we take the on click event. And what we are going to do is that we just call the set items and we get the all items. So it's, you know, when you're starting to program like this, creating functions to repopulate your repeater, uh, you can see we are on line 58 here. Instead of doing the on ready, the for each in repeater all the time, we are reusing it and just, you know, using a small function that will do everything for you. So when when everything is loaded here and we start searching, you can see how fast the search goes. It's, uh, you know, it's uh, super fast. Uh, and when we click reset, the repeater will just take all the data you had and repopulate it with it. So you can see how fast it is and there's no reloading to the data collection 
so the page stays responsive and fast for your users. So this is a nice way to work with the repeaters uh, in, in this kind of ways. Uh, and uh, we will try to continue this uh, uh, series uh, working with the repeaters by creating uh, drop downs and several filters and stuff like that uh, for you later on. Uh, there, uh, there is a ton of things to learn about uh, repeaters and how to use them in very cool ways uh, that we will teach you. So stay up to date by visiting wixshow.com uh, or go to Google and search for Wix code forums and ask your questions in the community forums. Uh, and happy coding from Andreas at wigshow.com. See you later. Bye.